HTML is wonderful, but it does not allow you to just make client-side interactions in a web browser. For that, you're gonna need JavaScript. And for that, so many people will choose React, Vue, Svelte. These are tools, these are frameworks that make it really easy to create uh, really nice stateful applications in the web browser. Uh, and Elm is no different. Um, so let me show you, let's let's hop over to, to make a little bit of a React um, example here. I'm gonna use JSX, which is so popular. It looks like it's built into VS Code. I'm not upset. I had to install an Elm plugin, that's fine. Um, so uh, what we're gonna do is we are gonna make a simple React component. Import React from React. And we're gonna pretend that we have access to React. Uh, I don't have that installed, so we'll see what happens. Um, but uh, how React works is you can make stateful components um, in JavaScript modules like you know, this counter. And what you can do is you can um, kind of mix JavaScript syntax uh, with uh, HTML. And that is called JSX. So JSX allows you to you know, make a button, um, and then the button can have an on-click event. And the on-click event, uh, you know, you can use these squiggly brackets to escape. Maybe I make an increment function plus. Why does it do that? I didn't tell it to do that. All right, minus. I have a decrement function. Uh, and then let's make a p tag here uh, where we say the count is whatever the value of count is. So um, what are these here? Uh, these are these are functions that you can make. I'm just going to make them in line here. Increment is going to do some work. Um, decrement's also going to do some work. We're going to leave that alone for now. Um, but uh, the latest version of React uses uh, an API called uh, Hooks. Um, so the way the Hooks API works is you kind of create this like tuple, uh, this like pair of two values uh, with this use state. Uh, function here. And what you can do is you can set an initial value. Let's uh, set the initial value to 10, for example. Um, count is going to be the value that you can use in your markup. So we're seeing we're using it here. And then set count is a function you can call um, to uh, update that count. So you'll pass in kind of the new value. And React um, is like well documented, and it's uh, if you go to like React.dev and check out like the tutorials and stuff, uh, it calls itself it's like kind of like the pure um, JavaScript framework. So it's all about you know using these functions that take in uh, inputs and returning like the new value of count, and then the next time React renders, uh, it will use that new value. So um, this is a React app that works. I'm gonna need you to take my word for it. <laughs> uh, once you plug it in, you, you kind of export this function and then you uh, use some like react.mount and react.root element, all that stuff to connect it to an application. But this is what a component uh, looks like in React. Um, so coming from here, kind of if we break apart this program into three parts, we kind of have like this initialization part. Uh, we've got these ways to like update um, the state of our app. And then we've got a way to view uh, the current state uh, of our counter, right? So uh, this pattern is incredibly similar, like dangerously similar to how Elm works. I don't know why I said dangerous. I just thought that would be exciting. Uh, I'm going to take this code and we are going to convert this uh, React code into uh, the equivalent Elm code. So I'm going to go over here in the main. We're going to delete all that stuff that we did. Uh, I'm going to leave on click. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the React, and we are going to use the same exact init update um, in view pattern. So uh, when we want to initialize state in Elm, we just use variables. Uh, we don't use any hooks or anything like that. So what you'll see is maybe I say init, uh, and then I'm just going to initialize the count. Um, I mean, I'll just keep this here uh, just for comparison. Um, I'm just going to say init 10. So that's going to say my counter, I'm going to initialize the value to 10. Uh, update, uh, this is actually pretty close. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to just make increment. And then instead of calling this set count function, that's like a function that mutates something 
uh, over there. Let's just make a function that takes in the current count and returns the new one. Um, and we can do the exact same thing for decrement. So I'm going to copy this. And then decrement is going to look exactly the same. So I'm going to kind of keep these here so we can keep in mind that these things aren't, aren't that different. So init sets the initial state of the counter. It doesn't uh, do all this use state stuff. Uh, increment, decrement. And then what we saw earlier was um, this HTML. Can I do this? Oh, that, that, that worked a lot better than I thought it would. Um, let's comment this out. And let's do this the Elm way too. So view is going to take in the current value of that count and it's going to make a div. The div is going to have three children button on click. We're going to do an increment and then the text message uh, will be plus the text content, not text message. Um, be plus be minus decrement. But this is a pretty much direct translation of what we saw from React. So uh, what you can do is you can say count colon, and then we're going to use the string concatenation operator. It's kind of like plus um, in JavaScript, but plus plus is just for putting strings together. And then uh, we are going to convert uh, the count from an integer to a string so that we can render it inside this text function. Uh, there's no automatic conversion there. Uh, but this is the equivalent of the Elm program. So at the end of the day, we just converted uh, like the exact same thing uh, over to Elm. Uh, this is this is like a counter uh, component. So if I save this, this all compiles and this works fine. And um, I'm gonna do a little bit of the glue code that I emitted from the React to like the React root mount, all that stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna have this uh, new module browser sandbox that's gonna allow me to connect up the init. It's gonna allow me to connect up the view. And then for the update function, we're basically, every time we click, we're getting a function and then we're getting the current state of the count and we're just running that function on the count. So I'm just gonna do this in line. We'll come back to this, but this is like wiring it up. And this is, um, uh, once I import browser, this is all you need. I'm gonna make myself tiny over here. Uh, what we're seeing is a working counter app in Elm. So I took that React code, I directly translated it, and, and we're done. We did, we did it. Uh, so this is uh, a working Elm um, component. This is a, a working stateful app minus plus. If I was in React and I wanted to uh, add a reset button, uh, it would be easy. I would just add a new button, say it's going to call the reset function, give it the label reset, uh, and then I would do the same thing. I would say reset. And then rather than saying count minus one, I would just set the count to zero. Uh, this would, oops, this would work with React and it would be the exact same um, kind of solution that you'd see with Elm. So I'm gonna copy this, say call the reset function on click. Put that in quotes, uh, cause that is a label and then boom. And then instead of taking in the count and subtracting one, I'm gonna take in the count and always return zero, regardless of that count. I don't even care what it is. And if I save that, it goes up to 15, it's back to zero, back to zero. So whatever we set here, that's the initial state. We've got our updaters. Uh, we've got our way to take the current version of the state. This gets rerun every time the count changes, every time it's incremented, decremented, reset, just like React. Uh, and then we just wire it up using this browser.sandbox function that comes with the core Elm browser library. Um, if you are an Elm developer, you are probably screaming right now. <laughs> this is uh, correct Elm code. This is working Elm code, but this is not a conventional idiomatic Elm code. So in the next video, I'm going to introduce you to the Elm architecture. We're going to add some type annotations. We're going to clean up this a uh, little bit. Uh, everything's right really, except for how we're doing the, the functions. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna make this the Elm way, uh, in the next video. So I'll see you there.